And I want to read you, rather than reading the whole chapter to you again, I want to read you just a couple of verses. Verse number 5 and verse number 6 of Psalms chapter number 85. Psalms 85, verse 5 and 6. Simple title to a simple message today, Why We Need Revival. Why We Need Revival. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Father, we thank you for the word of God. Blessed, I pray, help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Why do we need revival in our country? How many of you believe in your heart? Now, this is a serious question. And don't just raise your hand because somebody else might. But how many of you here in this building this morning would say, Preacher, I know that America needs revival. How about raise your hand? Amen. I know that America needs revival. You can't look around and, uh, and know that America does not need a revival of the of the of the. Uh, spirit of God in our country. We have gone evil. We have gone astray. We have passed laws and and uh, you know that that uh, go against the morality of man. That go against the Bible. And any time that happens, my friend, a nation is in trouble when we go against the things of God. Let me read you some t- statistics and give you just a couple of things, and we'll be through. These are things that we need to think about. Why we need revival. Revive means to bring back to life or consciousness, to to resuscitate, to restore to use, to renew in the mind, to regain health or excitement. That's what revival is. Revival, again, I'll say to you, and don't be confused with what revival is. Revival is for saved people. Revival is not for lost people. Lost people are dead in trespasses and sin, and you can't revive that. It must be born again. Amen. It must be made alive in Christ Jesus. Revival is for God's people. There are enough God's people in the United States. If we got revival, and if we had a great awakening such as uh, was at the turn of the century, if we had great men that would stand and proclaim the Word of God, no matter what anybody else said, we'll have revival. But who's going to stand in the gap? Who's going to make up that hedge? God, help me to do my part here in Mars Hill. Amen? God, help me to do my part here in this part of the world to stand in the gap and make up the hedge and not fold and not bend to the, to the desires of this world and to the things that bring uh, keep us from revival. Of the 250,000 Protestant churches in America... Now that includes Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, anything that's not Catholic. In America, 200,000 are either stagnant with no growth or declining. 80% of the churches in America, and I'm not going to read that other statement because it don't apply to us. 80% of the churches in America are in a state of decline. We are not part of that 80%. Amen? Amen. Well, that ought to excite you to know that 20%, only 20% of Protestant churches in America, only 20% are on the incline. And a lot of those are not on the incline spiritually. They're just on the incline because they figured out ways to get people in church that don't glorify and honor God. 4,000 churches, listen, this is, a, this is staggering. You say, I don't believe it. That's because you don't see it around here because we've got so many. 4,000 churches a year are closing their doors. 4,000 churches a year in America are closing their doors. Do we need revival or not? My son tells me that uh, he sees churches across America that have shut their doors. Because people have given up on God. Why? Because there's no revival. Because there's no spirit of God moving. It takes the spirit of the living God to stir someone or to stir a church. 
Less than half the number of churches today, there are less than half the number of churches today than there were a hundred years ago. How staggering. Less than half the churches today than there were a hundred years ago when the population has doubled. Now, that put a little perspective on things. 3,500 people leave the church every day. Since 1950, there are one-third fewer churches in the United States. Why do we, we need revival? Now let me put some questions to you. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? The Bible says, will thou not revive us again? Let me give you some questions to ask yourself real quickly about do I need revival? And don't answer out loud. When I hear the Lord's name taken in vain and used as a curse word and am not moved to righteous indignation, do I need revival? Yes, I do. When striving for personal holiness ceases to dominate your thinking, then personal revival is needed. Do you desire holiness in your life? These are just questions. These are just questions that you might ask yourself, you might present to yourself to determine whether or not you and your life need revival. I'm already convicted. I know that I need revival. When you do not attend corporate worship regularly with the church, that Jesus built, or have no desire to be with the redeemed in the body of Christ, the church, do you need revival? Do you need revival if you don't, if it doesn't bother you not to go to church? I'm just asking questions. When I sin and know that it is sin and fail to repent immediately of that sin, do I need revival? Yes, I do. Now, there's one thing I know, friend. When I sin, God lets me know right away. And if I don't take care of that thing on the spot, I mean right then, if I don't take care of that thing right then, then it only gets worse. And the only way that I can have any, that I can see any sense of revival in my life is to try to keep my life cleaned up. And if I sin right then is the time to confess my sin and ask him to forgive me. Because he did say if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Where there is no hunger for the hearing of the word of God or for the reading of the Bible, would you say we need revival? Where is the hunger at for the word of God that it used to that we used to have? Where is the desire for the word of God that we that we get it out and get into the scripture and read what thus saith the word of God and let it encourage our hearts? That's what the Bible is for. It is for our strength, it is for our encouragement. It is so that we as believers can grow in the grace and knowledge and so that we can have courage to stand in these last days. Friend, if we do not desire the word of God, then we certainly we must know that we need revival. When the eternal fate of those of our family or our co-workers or our friends, even those that we don't know, when it fails us, when it fails for us to know that we must give them the gospel and it doesn't bother us that they're going to hell, we need revival. People are going to, people are going to hell, and, but who cares? What if that had been the attitude of some people that prayed for you? What if that had been the attitude of those around you that had a burden for you and that was concerned for your salvation, but they didn't care? God help us that we care for the lost and dying of this world and for our friends and for our neighbors. When my prayer life ceases 
to be an everyday necessity, then I'm really, what I'm saying to God by my silence is, God, I'm good. I don't need you. Lord, help us to pray. If we're to experience revival, we must pray. If we're to experience revival, we must uh, do what the Word of God says and humble ourselves before an Almighty God. If I find more joy in discord or disunity than in the unity of the church, the unity of the workplace, or the unity of my family, then I need revival. When I see some injustice or someone suffering and fail to be moved by that, then I need revival. Then you need revival. Now, friend, there's two or three things that I know for certain today. Number one, I know that I need revival. Number two, I know I need to study more. Number three, I know I need to pray more. Number four is I love this church. I love you people. I would not for any, I, for no reason am I going to Am I going to uh, edge around the Word of God or sugarcoat the Word of God uh, because I don't want to hurt your feelings? I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I love you, but I want you to know the truth. We need revival. Our community needs revival. Our country needs revival. And if it's going to happen, it'll happen with me and it'll happen with you. We need revival. Revival is something that's hard to get. Revival is something that is tough to maintain. And revival is something that is easy to lose. Will thou not revive us again? Apparently, they had, they had experienced revival before, but now they're asking, the psalmist is asking, will thou not revive us again? How many of you have experienced revival in your lifetime? Amen. About everybody here. Listen, will thou not revive us again? That thy people may rejoice in the Lord. One of the greatest things about revival is rejoicing in the Lord. Why is the importance of revival? Six things, and I'll be through. The importance of revival is this. Some say that we need revival to have more zeal for the Lord. Well, that's, that's right. If I have revival, I'll have more zeal for the Lord. Anything I do, if I really enjoy it, if I really, you know, really get enthused about it, I'm going to do a better job about it. Amen? And my zeal for the things of God is determined by whether or not I have revival in my soul. I've been to work for every day for I don't know how long. I have no zeal for that today. I don't have no zeal for that tomorrow or the next day because I've done it so much. So I'm not going to get excited about that. But I was excited and I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I get excited about the things of God. I have a zeal for the things of the Lord. And I don't get tired of that. But God help us that we not. God help us that we not lose our zeal for the things of God. Because when we do that, then we are assured that we need revival. Importance of revival is that if we're going to win souls to the Lord, we must have revival. If we're going to win souls to Jesus, we must, if we're going to see people that are lost and dying and going to hell, if we're going to see them saved, we must have revival. You may have family members that are going to hell. If you get revival, they might have a chance to get saved because you can go witness to them in the Spirit of God. Some people say that we need revival. They're not mad at me or nothing. They got a call. Amen. They don't get excited because they walked out of the church. Some people would say that we need to revival, that we would love one another more fervently. I, there, I don't know. We ought to tell each other we love, and we do. And sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to the choir when I say, things like this because I know y'all love each other. But listen, let's don't take that lightly because the devil is still that way just as quick as he can. 
He'll stir strife in the, in the midst of God's people just as quick as he can if he can cause us not to have revival because there's some turmoil going on in the midst of the sheep. Because some devil, because some wolf gets in the sheep and tries to tear up the flock, the devil will cause, try to cause us not to have revival. We need revival. We need to stir in the move of God. We need to love each other as never before. We need to come together as a church as never before. And as close and tight as we are today, we don't never want to take that for granted. That we love each other and that we love the church. The Bible says, the psalmist said that we need revival that we might rejoice greater in the Lord, that we might rejoice in thee. Revival means to come alive. We need the joy of the Lord restored to our soul. Everybody grin at me. Here I'm getting them looks again. Now I've not said anything mean to you yet. I'm just trying to tell you we need revival. And I don't know if you're convicted because we're not having revival or you're mad at me. But uh, I'm telling you what, when you have revival in your soul, your joy is going to be greater. Who don't want to be happy? Is there anybody who don't want to have joy in your soul? There's enough dark, gloomy days going by. We need some joy in our soul. Amen. Revival will cause us to have the joy in our soul. The psalmist said in Psalms 51, 12, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O Lord. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Now everybody smile at me real big. Now if you're mad at me, don't smile, okay? And I'm going to look you over. If you ain't smiling, I know you're mad at me, and I don't see nobody. Uh-oh. <laughs> now that you're all smiling real big, spew forth the praise of the Lord and say amen. Now, at least I feel a little better anyway, whether you put on or not. Amen. But we need the joy of the Lord restored. We need that we have revived. That is a need of us. Rejoicing will do some things for you. It will invigorate your soul winning. It will help you to uh, improve our service for Him. It increases our spiritual strength. And when our spiritual strength is increased, it helps us that we're able to go out into a lost and dying world and tell people, Jesus loves you. I need revival. Lord, stir my soul. I pray, God, stir my soul, stir my heart to revival that I might rejoice in the Lord. Now, we've got our options. We've got our, our choices. We can do what we want to do because we're people and we do what we want to do, basically. But in my heart, down deep in my heart, I want to move of God. Now, don't take this wrong because you can throw it right back at me. My, my spirit of revival is not determined whether you have revival or not. Amen? You having revival is not determined by whether I have revival or not. It's an individual thing. It's an individual process. So if God sends revival to my soul and you think I've gone crazy, join the fun. Amen? Because there's no greater thing in your life, in my life, than we see an increase and a spiritual movement in our heart and our soul. We're going, you're going to need it, friend. You need it now, but you're going to need it worse. And they come knocking at our door telling us that we can't preach certain things in the Word of God. And then you have to try to get me out of jail when I do. Because by the help of God, no matter what goes on, if it's in the Word of God, and I, don't, I, told, I told the deacon, I may have told the church Wednesday night, I don't pick on things to pick on. When I preach to you, I try to do it exactly what God wants. And if it's in the Word of God and God says preach on it, I will. 
I'm not going to hedge around, but I'm not going pick to pick it out just to try to make the headlines as some preachers will do. If it's given to the Spirit of God, it'll be beneficial to you, and it'll be beneficial to me. But I need revival to get me through such times that may be coming down the way for the preacher and for this church. Are we going to stand? Are we going to fold? Are we going to have revival? Or are we going to go the way of, of 80% of the churches in America? Friend, I think we just need revival, don't you? Father, help us, I pray, God. Lord, as we go this week, God, I pray that you take the words of revival. Stir them in our heart and our soul. God, encourage us to read the Bible, to pray, to seek your face, and have an awakening right here in Madison County, Mars Hill Community. Lord, that thy people may rejoice in thee. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm through. I, that is it. I'm done. <laughs>